Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about fluid resuscitation. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. The learning objectives we will be discussing in this video will be What is fluid resuscitation and its importance? Understanding the indications for fluid resuscitation. Recognizing signs of fluid imbalance. Learning about different types of fluids used. And nursing considerations for fluid resuscitation. Let's get into the session. Fluid resuscitation simply means like giving your body the necessary fuel it needs to keep running smoothly. When you are sick or injured, your body might lose a lot of fluids. This can be dangerous because your organs need a certain amount of fluid to work properly. Fluid resuscitation involves the administration of fluids to a patient to maintain or restore adequate fluid balance, blood volume and tissue perfusion. When we speak about adequate fluid balance, it means keeping the right amount of fluid in your body. Why is it important? Because it ensures your body functions properly and prevents fluid overload or fluid volume excess. Now, talking about restoring blood volume, it means having enough blood in your body. And why it is important is, it is essential for carrying oxygen and nutrients to organs. When speaking about restoring tissue perfusion, it means ensuring good blood flow to all parts of your body. And this is important because it delivers oxygen and nutrients to tissues and organs for proper function. Here comes indications for fluid resuscitation. This includes Hypovolemia, as we all know, volume depletion because of loss of blood or plasma due to trauma, surgery, or burns. Next is dehydration, that is lack of total body water that might result from vomiting, diarrhea, or inadequate intake. Next comes sepsis. Sepsis is a kind of severe infection and when conditions like sepsis results, our body is fighting a big infection and really needs more fluids in order to regain the original volume. Last but not least, the indication is shock. Shock is nothing but insufficient blood flow to the tissues that results from severe hypotension and inadequate tissue perfusion. Now comes signs of fluid imbalance. We can categorize this according to hypovolemic state and hypervolemic state. Signs indicating hypovolemia are tachycardia, hypotension, dry mucous membranes, decreased urine output, altered mental status. Hypervolemia is indicated by signs such as hypertension, edema, jugular venous distension, respiratory distress, weight gain. Let's discuss fluids used for resuscitation. This we have already discussed in one of our previous videos and the link is given below for your reference. First comes crystalloids. Crystalloids are nothing but simple salt solutions like saline, similar to the fluid in your body. They help increase your blood volume quickly. Examples of crystalloids include normal saline that is 0.9% sodium chloride, ring lactate. The main use of crystalloids are volume expansion and electrolyte replacement. The main advantage of crystalloids are that they are inexpensive and readily available everywhere. 
and the main disadvantages include they are required in larger volumes and there is potential for edema to result from fluid resuscitation. Now comes colloids. Colloids are thicker solutions that stay in your bloodstream longer, helping to maintain blood volume. And examples of colloids include albumin, dextran, hydroxyethyl starch. The main uses of colloids are they mainly help in volume expansion and they help pretty much in maintaining oncotic pressure. Pros of colloids include Colloids are required in smaller volumes and they help in longer intravascular retention. Cons of colloids are they are expensive and they have risk of allergic reactions and there is potential for coagulopathy and kidney impairment as a result of resuscitation. Now comes blood products. As we all know, examples of blood products are whole blood, packed red blood cells, plasma, and platelets. The main use of blood products are they treat severe hemorrhage, anemia, and coagulopathies. The main advantages of blood products are they help restoring oxygen carrying capacity and provides clotting factors. The disadvantages of blood products are there is risk of transfusion reactions and another main disadvantage is there is potential for infectious disease transmission such as HIV, hepatitis, etc. Let's discuss some of the important nursing considerations during fluid resuscitation. First and foremost is monitoring vital signs where we regularly check blood pressure, heart rate and respiratory rate. Next is administration of IV fluid rate. Infuse fluids at the correct rate as ordered that is rapid for shock and slower for maintenance. Accurate intake and output records are maintained where we keep precise records of fluid intake and output periodically. Next is checking electrolytes, blood gases and other relevant lab results to guide fluid therapy. Most important is watch for complications where we should be alert for signs of fluid overload, allergic reactions or other issues. Next is assessing fluid status. Regularly evaluating for signs of dehydration or fluid overload, for example, skin turgor, mucous membranes. So, so far we have discussed what is fluid resuscitation and its importance understanding the indications for fluid resuscitation, recognizing signs of fluid imbalance and different types of fluids used, and important nursing considerations while doing fluid resuscitation. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it, and subscribe it, and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.